To illustrate the elegance of asymmetric key cryptography and just how clever the RSA algorithm is, I'm going to show you how to do the calculations by hand, or at least using a spreadsheet. To be honest, unless you're a student of advanced mathematics, you probably don't need to know the details. But maybe you're curious and you want an insight into the process. If so, carry on watching. The first thing we need to do is generate the asymmetric keys. To generate the asymmetric keys, you need to choose any two prime numbers. A prime number is a whole number that can't be made by multiplying together two other whole numbers. Another way of putting that is to say that a prime number is only divisible by itself or by one. By the way, a number that isn't a prime number is called a composite number. We'll call these primes P and Q. You can see I've gone with P equals 3 and Q equals 11. I've kept them small to simplify the calculations. Later, you'll see that large primes, although necessary, are problematic. We now multiply them together. The result is called the RSA modulus. We'll call it N. In this example, then, N equals 33. There are only two prime numbers that will give us 33 when you multiply them together and these are 3 and 11. This is a very special property of prime numbers that RSA relies on. The bigger the two prime numbers, the better, because in practice it's extremely difficult to find the factors of a very big number that was the product of two primes. Now you need to calculate something called Euler's totient. The word totient comes from the Latin word tot, meaning that many or so many. It's also sometimes called the phi function because it's normally represented with the Greek letter phi. The totient tells us how many numbers there are up to the RSA modulus which are co-prime with the RSA modulus. We can calculate the totient using a formula but let's say a little bit about co-primes first. We'll need to choose one in a moment. Two numbers are co-prime if they have no common factors other than one. Take, for example, 4 and 6. The factors of 4 are 1, 2 and 4. The factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. They have a common factor, namely 2, so 4 and 6 are not co-prime. Two prime numbers are necessarily co-prime with each other, for example, 3 and 7, because the only common factor they have is 1. Two non-primes can be co-prime as well, for example, 8 and 9. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. And the factors of 9 are 1, 3 and 9. You can see the only common factor is 1. The good news is that you can calculate the totient easily using the formula P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So, for p equals 3 and q equals 11, the totient is 20. In other words, there are 20 numbers between 1 and 33, which are co-prime with 33. In the next step, you need to choose any prime number bigger than 1 and smaller than the totient that is co-prime with the totient. This isn't something you can do automatically with a built-in spreadsheet function, not easily anyway, so I've made this decision myself. The primes between 1 and 20 are 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. The prime number 5 isn't co-prime with 20 because it goes into 20 four times. 5 and 20 have a common factor of 4. So the possibilities are therefore 3, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. I've chosen 7 for no particular reason. And we call this K. K equals 7. The public part of my asymmetric key is therefore N equals 33 and K equals 7. This half of the key 
consists of two numbers. To get the other half of the asymmetric key, we need to find the so-called modular inverse of k with respect to the totient. We can do this using the formula you can see here, where j is the modular inverse we're looking for. k times j mod the totient equals 1. We know the value of k, 7, and we know the value of the totient, 20. But because we're using modulo arithmetic, we can't simply rearrange this equation to make j the subject. One way to solve it is by using something called the extended Euclidean algorithm. But this is fairly advanced mathematics, and I don't want to go into it here. However, because the numbers are so small in this example, we can simply try different values of j, ranging from 0 up to the totient, until we find the value of j that makes this equation true. Here are the different values of j I'm trying, and here I've plugged them into the equation. In this example, you can see the equation evaluates to 1 when j is 3. So my private key is j equals 3 and n equals 33. We use the RSA modulus in both the public and the private key. So let's see how to encrypt a message using the public key. The maths is actually pretty simple, but we're working with very big numbers here. This is the message I want to encrypt, secret. Now RSA only works with numbers, so what I've done is I've converted each of these into its position in the alphabet. The first part of the calculation is to raise each of these numbers to the power of k, which is what I'm doing here. You can see I'm getting the spreadsheet to do the work for me, and the result here is very, very large. And I've done that for each of these letters. The second part of the calculation is to take this number, divide it by n, and get the remainder after division. In other words, m to the power k modulus n. In this case, then, I have 13, 14, 9, 6, 14, and 26. This is my ciphertext. This is the encrypted message. Let's call each of these S. Decrypting the message is pretty straightforward. All I do is take each value of S and raise it to the power of the private key, J. So here I have S to the power of J. Then I'm getting S to the power of J modulus N. You can see I'm using N again. Notice how these values, then, are the same as my original values. I've got the plain text back again. And that's it. Now, before I continue, I just want to point out that it doesn't matter which of the two keys is the public key and which is the private key. For example, if I just swap the 7 and the 3 around, so I'm encrypting it with the 3 and decrypting it with the 7, it still works. The RSA algorithm is called a trapdoor algorithm. It works in both directions. So it's arbitrary which key is private and which key is public. Now let's do the whole thing again, but this time I'm going to use a different pair of prime numbers. Let's say 47 and 61. I've got a new value for n, the RSA modulus, and I've got a new value for the totient. My spreadsheet is working out a new value for j as well. I've actually extended this all the way down. Here it is. I'm using a built-in spreadsheet lookup function to pluck that value out. But look at the numbers when I'm doing the encryption. These numbers are huge. My spreadsheet can cope with these, but when it comes to decryption, it simply can't handle it. My spreadsheet is trying to calculate 1,346 raised to the power of 1,183. And these are not particularly large prime numbers. Nevertheless, the principles that you've seen here using small numbers still apply. 
there it is. The RSA algorithm by hand, in principle at least.